We at the seven universities that did the lab tests on these 1,500 samples are now suing the CDC for COVID-19 fraud. I'll bet him the price of a SARS-CoV-2 isolate that he loses that court case. Hey, Dr. Wilson here. I'm a molecular and structural biologist, and I'm back to debunk some more COVID-19 misinformation. And this week, I'm going to be debunking Dr. Derek Knaus. Derek Knaus is somebody who thinks that COVID-19 is not real. And COVID deniers have recently been passing around a video where he claims to have proof that it's not real. This should be good. I have a PhD in virology and immunology. I'm a clinical lab scientist and have tested 1,500 supposed positive COVID-19 samples collected here in Southern California. Okay, that's a lot of samples. How did he test them? When my lab team and I did the testing through Koch's postulates and observation under a scanning electron microscope... Testing through Koch's postulates. Well, in order to do this with a virus, he would have had to isolate the virus, cultivate it in host cells, prove that it's filterable, have it produce a comparable disease in the original host species or a related one, re-isolate the virus from that host species, and then detect a specific immune response to that virus. Did he do all these things? If so, how? What animals did he use? What cell lines did he use? These are all important questions that he doesn't answer. But the kicker for me is that he says that he observed the samples with a scanning electron microscope. Now, this is not how you identify viruses using electron microscopy. You see, usually in order to identify viruses that are as small as the coronavirus, you want to use something called transmission electron microscopy, or TEM, not scanning electron microscopy. Scanning electron microscopy is not sensitive enough to see the details associated with viruses as small as the coronavirus. We found no COVID in any of the 1,500 samples. What we found was that all of the 1,500 samples were mostly influenza A and some were influenza B. Well, how did you identify that it was influenza A and influenza B then? Did you use biochemical techniques? Certainly you can't tell just by looking through a scanning electron microscope the difference between influenza A and influenza B. So how did he do this? But not a single case of COVID, and we did not use the BCSP, the, the BSPCR test. Well, something that's really important here is that he says that he looked at positive samples. I'm assuming this means that they are positive by PCR. He doesn't really explain this, so I have to assume it. But if it's true, then of course you're not going to find any COVID samples because PCR samples are treated with ethanol. Ethanol is going to destroy the viral particle while preserving the virus's genetic material, which is what PCR is testing for. So how were the samples prepared? This is another important detail that he just leaves out. We then sent the remainder of the samples to Stanford, Cornell, and a few of the University of California labs, and they found the same results as we did. No COVID. So which labs? Who's running these labs? What are their names? Surely they would back you up on this, right? Well, where are they? All of us then spoke to the CDC and asked for viable samples of COVID, which CDC said they could not provide as they did not have any samples. Well, on the CDC's website, they actually have links for where you can go to buy viable samples of isolated SARS-CoV-2 virus. Researchers are able to buy these samples from the NIAID for research purposes. So either this guy is really bad at online shopping for science materials, or he's lying. We at the seven universities that did the lab tests on these 1,500 samples are now suing the CDC for COVID-19 fraud. I'll bet him the price of a SARS-CoV-2 isolate that he loses that court case. All the four papers written on COVID-19 only describe small bits of RNA, which were only 37 to 40 base pairs long, which is not a virus. Hmm, well, maybe he missed the papers that fully sequenced the SARS-CoV-2 genome, which turns out to be 29.8 thousand bases long. No one in any lab worldwide has ever isolated and purified this virus in its entirety. That's because there never really was, 
they never really found the virus. All they've ever found was small pieces of RNA, which were never identified as the virus anyway. Hmm. Maybe he also missed this paper, which purified the SARS-CoV-2 virus and imaged it using cryo-electron microscopy, which is a form of TEM. And these pictures are in high enough resolution to see the individual amino acid side chains belonging to the spike protein, which sticks out of the viral envelope. These amino acid side chains are what the RNA codes for. So by reading the code of the RNA and then comparing it to the sequence of amino acids in the protein, we can positively identify these viral particles as SARS-CoV-2. Either he missed all those papers or he's lying. Well, that was certainly embarrassing for Derek Knaus. These COVID deniers get easier and easier to debunk every single week. That's going to do it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. The links to all of the science and information that I reference in this video are linked in the description below so that you can check them out for yourself. I know it was a short video this week, but be sure to subscribe so you can join me next week where I'll be debunking Robert F. Kennedy Jr. himself. See you then.